Manchester United won, Aston Villa nil. And you know, you guys, or some of you at least, guys and girls, might be wondering why there's not a broad smile on my face and why there's a constant frown and why the last few episodes have been, you know, filled with anger, filled with frustration, filled with confusion. And I'm going to explain it all today. Before Cappy speaks, and big up to Cappy, I'm going to break down this situation. I'm going to talk about today's game and why Manchester United's 1 0 against Aston Villa in the FA Cup was not good enough, won't be good enough going forwards, and is the reason why Manchester United will not be successful at all until certain things happen, certain regimes change, and the culture is changed for real before i get into that be sure to drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and share the twins to another dimension i mean this from the bottom of my heart thank you for all the support so far we gotta keep on pushing 2022 just started and we gotta go and reach new levels so as you can see people i've got my paper here every manchester united game I sit down and I note down every single thing about what I thought in this game, what I thought the game was, certain players sometimes, but mostly the patterns of play. First half, it's all the same. I think, you know what, I, I, I'll give some credit where credit is due. In the first half, I believe that maybe I was duped, maybe I was, I, I don't know. But in the first half, I did believe that the effort was slightly raised. Don't agree. But am I really here to reward? Am I really here to congratulate that? Because that's a given. That should be a given on the football pitch. I keep on saying it's Manchester United Football Club. Effort should be a given on any football club in general. So the effort, maybe not. It wasn't good enough at all. But the things... That I see an alarming rate, and I'll get to Ralph Rangnick in a second. But the things I see at an alarming rate at this football club are the quality, the basic qualities of a footballer dropping in each and every one of our squad players. Each and every one of the 29 people that Ralph Rangnick trains, or 26, or whatever number it is. Every single one of them lack the motivation, they lack the quality, they lack the personal pride and technique to be at a Premier League level. Not just a, a mid-table level, not just a top six level, not just a top four level or a Premier League title contending level, at a basic footballing level. Up here and down there where the foot is. Don't think of any other funny stuff. All of our players, starting 11, to the ones on the bench, to the ones that can't even make it on the bench, struggle and are struggling to play football. The thing they've been playing for basically and virtually their whole lives. And that makes me think that this is deeper than football. This problem that we're facing and actually you know what i didn't just ponder on that suddenly i knew that i've been thinking that this issue with manchester united is deeper than football it's deeper than life because in the end of the day i'm seeing people that don't even want to step foot on that football pitch and hear the roar of the fans, hear the expectations of the fans grow and, and hear the groans of the fans with every time you give the pass away, with every time you take a poor shot or make a wrong decision on the football pitch. These players cannot stand the expectations. They cannot live with the expectations of seeing the fans all around them wanting to see a good brand of football wanting to see the basic thing the basic things done right 
they cannot take it. And you know, it was funny because at parts of last season, I myself and other people kind of congratulated this team for developing some bottle, developing a level of resilience that they, you know, whenever they went behind, they would come back, they would show their bottle, they would show that they have something about them. And it's like they've taken, not 10, 100 steps backwards. And that is shocking to me. You know, one thing I mentioned to, um, you know, all my brethren's football community in a group chat, shout out to you lots. Shout out to you lots. You know who you are. You know who you are, but shout out to you lots. I mentioned, I said, you know, I've never seen something like this in football before. I don't know if Cappy agrees with this, but I've never seen, I've seen teams down tools. Chelsea do every two years when they get sick of their manager and they think it's time for something brand new. They see someone better on the market. They just say, all right, time to down tools. We don't care. We know what we can do on the football pitch. So when a new manager comes in, we'll go ahead and win the league. We'll win the Champions League or something like that. But I've never seen a team psychologically defeated. And not just a couple players. The whole team. The whole squad. It says it. The faces say it. People coming off the pitch and sitting on the bench like they're shell-shocked. Like they don't know what's just have gone on. Like they've just had a dream where a big old lion was chasing them down and right before the point of no return, their eyes bulged open and they were breathing, their heart was pulsing. It's a nightmare. Everything at the moment to do with Manchester United is a nightmare. From the fans watching it in the stadiums, from home, to the players going into the work workplace and just, I don't know what's going on, but this is bigger than football. It's clear it is. It's clear as day. And all these things that we see on social media, with these guys smiling on the training pitch, look, I don't know. Maybe I'm just speculating at this point, but I don't believe it's true. I believe these guys are just forced to do it to make their, um, to make a certain image of the club look a certain way. Because I look on a football pitch, that should be a safe place. That should be your answer. Whatever's going on with you, in your private lives, whatever, football should be an escape for you. And for me, football seems like a problem. An absolute problem. These guys do not want to step in front of the Old Trafford or away fans. None at all. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what's going to go on in the weekend. That away game against Aston Villa once again, who are going to be hungry. Who are going to be angry because they should have got a win in that game. They should have won that game. Manchester United got lucky. Very lucky. And we could see, just like what happened in the Wolves game, I can see bad intentions. I'm having bad dreams and I'm not even sleeping. Manchester United are in a lot of trouble. A lot. And it's going to take years to repair. This squad is shattered. This squad is devastated. This squad has lost everything mentally and physically because your mentals contribute to all of your physical attributes. If you're mentally shattered, physically, sometimes you don't even want to get out of the bed. And what I'm seeing from these guys is mentally, they're not up for the challenge. Par a few of them. And I don't want to name names, which is why I'm not going to do this. So, par a few of them, a lot of these guys are out of it. They're finished. They're done. And what does that mean for us? What do we do? Us as fans? I always say we need to come together. But it seems like when the situations get worse, we just divide ourselves. Because all of a sudden there's a right and wrong. Nobody deserves an opinion, or at least a certain section of the fan base do not deserve an opinion. 
So maybe we're just doomed. Maybe there is no way out. Maybe we just sit back and pray that something miraculously turns around. But I don't want to sit here and just let things happen. Do you want to sit here and let all of this happen? Or are you going to stand up, come together with your brothers and sisters and actually speak sense, speak the truth, debate, not argue with your fellow brothers and sisters. Because when that happens, when division happens within the fan base, they have won. Vicious cycle, people. You make your own choice. I can't believe it. You know what? People are gonna say, yeah, yo, Cappy, chill out, chill out. You know, we won the game. It's a cup competition. All we needed to do is get the result. And my question to you, my question to each and every one of you with that response is, do you enjoy what you are seeing? No. Nope. I'm gonna sit back and give you two seconds to answer. One, two. Now tune back in because I have a lot more to say. This Manchester United team, for the majority of them, what was it? CM said we had, uh, what, 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 29 players? Get rid of all the, you know, David De Gea, you're safe. But I swear down, most of them can go. Most of them can go. And I know it's not going to be a one window thing, a two window thing, a three window thing, a four window thing, maybe not even a five window thing because this board is incompetent. But oh Lord, if we were in the same position, I know we would do right by the club. Because right now we have people in the positions that do not know how to operate properly because we are not, Manchester United are not a football club anymore. I hope you guys understand that. I hope you guys and girls understand that Manchester United is far from a football club anymore. Nothing, zilch, gone. We are a business. We are on the stock market to make our owners money. Not by winning football matches, but by purely being Manchester United by purely having the reputation of a football club that Sir Alex built up into a complete dynasty, a winning machine, everything of those and more. We, right now, and you know what was funny? Can shout out to United Real Therapy, go subscribe to Big Mr. Structure and Neurodin's channel. Shout out to United Real Therapy. Go subscribe to that channel. Link will be in the description. I said that United on that channel are a Europa League team. And you know what? He was right. We are not even a Europa League side at this moment of time. Can we even get into the Conference League? Do we even deserve to be in one of those European competitions to have the chance of winning a trophy. No, we do not. How? Against every other, against the relegation candidates in the Premier League. We've been played off the park time and time and time again. And oh, I'm tired. I'm absolutely tired, exhausted mentally, physically. I'm weak. But these guys, they show the same exact things every single game. And what am I supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Just sit down and accept the beatings? Sit down, hope and pray, brush this one aside and say, don't worry, next game's gonna be oh so better. We're gonna win, the guys are gonna have a response and we're gonna be happy like Larry.
No, that is not being a realist. That is not the reality of what we are in right now as Manchester United fans. That is not the reality of what all of these players are right now, which is nothing. Manchester United Football Club right now is a joke. From top to bottom, our players are shell-shocked. They exert no energy, no effort, no pride, no wanting to wear the badge. This historic badge right here. Nobody wants to wear it. Nobody is living up to it, except for a few. Nobody is living up to the expectations of playing for Manchester United. And you expect me to sit here and pick apart the negatives. Go away from the negatives and, and, and pick up on some of the positives and say, Oh, well, you know, this game, we did this a bit better. We did that a bit better. No, we're not doing anything better. It's the same old straight line. Create a bar graph. It's just one straight line. And maybe, just maybe, there might be a dip. There might be a dip coming real soon. Because these guys are going to have what's coming to them. They're going to get it real soon. There is something brewing. There is something brewing. And I'm not going to tell you not listen to every single news, <coughs> news post that comes out. Follow CM22ENT on Instagram to get the news and, it, and on Twitter as well. We send out the news. Facebook as well. We send out the news articles. You know, we try and send out as much as we can on a daily basis. And I'm not going to say believe all of them things. But based on what you watch, based on the football that you see on a weekly basis, game to game basis, you can take a lot out of that. 100. You can take a lot of what you see. Body language. Technique physicality, pride, passion. I know this, those are the kind of trigger words, but it's true because the basic things we are not seeing right now. And how are we as football fans who commit dedication, passion, pride and joy each and every time we sit down or or go to Old Trafford, or go to an away ground, or watch from home a Manchester United game. How are we providing the basics? And those ones, the 11 plus whoever comes on, failing. How are they failing to do that? Tell me. Let me know in the comment section. Because maybe I'm wrong. Huh? Maybe me and CM are just wrong. But I'm pretty sure that there is no right and wrong in this anymore. Because when Manchester United are as bad as they are, when they are run as bad as they are and as bad as they have been for the last several to almost 10 years, there is no right and wrong in this situation. There are so many problems at this club. That I don't even know where to start. Feels like a vicious cycle. Feels like a record player. All of the above. I feel like I'm saying the same things week in, week out. And I'm sick and I'm tired of it. I'm sick and tired. I don't even have emotions when I'm watching Manchester United at the moment. They either come after. Because before... And during the game, I'm done. I don't... I care. I do care. This is why I'm here. I do care. I'm just confused. Listen, people. I'm going to leave you with a question. I'm going to leave you a question before we end, we end this episode. It's, it's hard. It's hard being a Manchester United fan. It's hard considering how much we've fallen. It's hard seeing that, you know, as fans, we're going to exert all of this energy just to be disappointed time and time again. It's hard. 
But do you guys and girls believe that this Ralph Rangnick uh, appointment will work out for the better of this football club when we're speaking down the line, you know, in two to three years time, maybe three to five years time? Will this Ralph Rangnick appointment, and I don't just mean as interim manager, but I mean as this consultancy role as well, because that's included. Will those appointments of Ralph Rangnick lead to Manchester United returning to what we know Manchester United to be in this modern era, or at least the previous era? A winning machine. A, 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 a football first team. A team that seeks to win every trophy possible in every single game they want to win it. A team with players that are hungry, that want to play for the badge, that want to play every single 90 minute game and are disappointed in themselves if they don't. Not in the manager, because they don't have an ego, because they feel like they haven't been good enough to warrant a starting 11 spot. So they work even harder to make sure that is a, it's at a place of no return. They have to be there. And even in some days, they won't be in that starting 11. So they work even harder. And then that instills the work ethic of winners. The work ethic of winners. Will we get there? When will we get there? And how will we get there? Let us know in the comment section below. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you lots. Me and CM will see you guys and girls in a bit. Take care, man. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, everything free, no need for a criminal, mind control, all subliminal, Twitter, TikTok, Insta, digital, join this crew, follow my Twitch and I might rate you, if you pass through ends in this my gang, bust down doors or phase right through.